All right, guys, welcome back to Schmatz Outdoors. Uh, if you guys could tell, the sun is well up this today. Um, today was opening day of deer season here in Minnesota, so I went and sat a little bit. Uh, six guys hunting, one shot fired, zero deer harm. So not many uh, shots around, anything like that, but it is what it is. So we're going to be wearing the blaze orange vest and probably a stocking cap or a baseball cap. Uh, most of the day today uh, because people are deer hunting I'm waiting a little bit here in the morning to get running so I'm kind of checking in the middle of the day where people are going to be actually deer hunting so I'm not you know going to check them right at early first light when you know deer will be moving you know the landowners won't be too happy with that so uh, I threw in a couple weasel boxes I had a farmer call me he thinks he's got a weasel messing with his chickens so I got my weasel boxes in. We're gonna get them put in that guy's yard. Otherwise, I got all the muskrat traps and everything out of here. You know, I took out most of the poles, other than, you know, a few, so I can make some coyote sets and mark them. Um, but yeah, otherwise, like I said, I think I'm pretty much ready to go. Short and sweet this morning, and we'll get out on the line. Hopefully, I got catches for you. Uh, it was cold this morning. It was 16 degrees when we went hunting. And I did see two coyotes while I was hunting today, so maybe the coyotes moved run last night in the cold, you know, they'll be hungry after it gets cold like this, so maybe they moved a little bit, and maybe some of the other animals maybe moved. Like I said, when it gets this cold, a bull, like that freezing mark, typically like that kind of shuts down the coons and uh, skunks, but we'll kind of see, you never know, like I said, I might have caught some going into the evening because it was still a little bit warmer last night, so... Um, there's still plenty of frost on the ground and everything right now. It's still below freezing, I think. So like I said, we'll, uh, get loaded up here and we'll be on our way. All right, guys. Well, I didn't make it far. Um, first trap of the morning here. Got a catch. Well, I guess it's not really morning, but early or er, er, late morning, I guess. But I got myself, I had a coyote in this set a few days ago. Again, it's just kind of a field edge change. And then I got just kind of a block of woods out in the middle of nowhere. Um, and then over here that uh, along that fence line I have another set I had a skunk in a few days ago, but I had a coyote in this set, you know, like I said Three days ago something like that. Well, then You know this whole area was all tore up. Well, I highly doubt this fox did it, but this is a big fox. So Luckily the coyotes didn't come back and kill him for me, but we'll uh, Get this guy dispatched and get out of here First trap is always as good as the last one, so I don't know. If this is signs to gun, it could be a long afternoon here, but I'll take it. All right, guys, so I've checked, uh, let's see, two other coyote sets and one dog proof with nothing in there. Uh, what I have is this uh, road that's kind of growed over with trees, and then here I got this fence line that goes down, I don't know, most of a half mile or a little more, and then kind of jogs over to a grove that's over this way. And then there's a big drainage ditch out here. But well, we got ourselves a coyote and he is big, big. He ain't a 50 pounder by any means, but he's 35, all at 35, I bet. So yesterday I actually had a rabbit caught in this set. And what I did is I just took the rabbit and I kind of made a brush pile set and stuck the rabbit kind of underneath kind of some of these weeds and stuff that were all knocked down here made a little brush pile set and I don't see really remnants of said rabbit but he was here but apparently the old rabbit got the old coyote today like I said nice big coyote we'll uh, get him out of here and move on we're only a few sets in and a coyote and a fox already so like I said the cold weather it was uh, 16 degrees this morning when we went hunting and I seen two coyotes basically two miles up here I seen two coyotes is where I was deer hunting so whether I mean I doubt this is one of them but you never know I mean he's been here for a while just as much as he's got it dug up but so we'll get this guy uh taken care of and we'll get moved on like I said we running a little behind already so we'll uh try have to try and make up some time all right guys uh Checked quite a few sets here, uh, making pretty good time through the line. Um, 
but I got a pair of catches here. I got one catch here and I have one down on the other end of this fence line. So down here by this tree here, I got a coyote set there. And I actually have one more over this way along that north south fence line that I haven't checked yet. But right here, what I have, there's kind of a big grassy draw here. This is to the east of me. Um, and basically what I did is right in the corner of this field on the south side of this fence line, I put a coyote set here. I had a coyote in here, I don't know, probably maybe a week ago already now. Um, but yeah, and then it almost looked like right here, like the grass is all knocked down, almost like they might have been like cutting through the fence right there. But And then the farmer kind of trampled down all this grass. Uh, they've been doing a little bit of trimming trees and stuff out here. But So it kind of makes, you kind of got, so north wind would be blowing this way. You know, so I'm blowing down into this draw. You know, any animal that's coming along the edge of this pasture uh, will come up to me, anything coming out of here. And then I got this fence line. So we got a kind of a, a whole series of things. And we actually got cattle right out here. All the, these black things are cows. So kind of a little bit of everything all come together in one spot here. And second coyote, uh, this trap was actually messed with like two days ago or so. And I come down, I could see my, uh, pan cover or whatever so I come down and I remade it you know kind of got my trap all bedded good again and whatever but so whether or not it was this guy or not I don't know but we'll uh, get him taken care of and like I said I do have another catch down here by this tree and when I get this one remade uh, we'll go down there and take care of that one too so putting I kind of thought uh, I mentioned it I think before I left this morning that uh, it was cold last night and I kind of figured the uh, canines would be moving, you know, when it's cold they get hungry and they, I think they travel a little bit more. The wind was light so I feel like they kind of had, you know, everything going to be a good day catching coyotes. You know, the weather switched, calm weather or calm winds, cool, like I said, just everything kind of fell in place I feel like to produce coyotes and obviously a fox too, but all right. We'll get him out of here. Like I said, I got a little work down there to take care of too, so. All right, guys, I'm down, uh, same location here. I had that coyote down on that end of this fence line. Uh, what we got again is the fence line runs that way. There's kind of a little two tractor road comes back in here. Yeah, you know, big draw with trees and stuff in there. I don't know why the raccoons are over here. You know, like this one tree is drawing them in or what, but I don't know. I caught a raccoon in here a few days ago and got a raccoon in here again. Uh, this guy's not very big, but you know, raccoons are raccoons, so I want to get him dispatched out of there. He's got my set tore up on because he's caught by a back leg, but so yeah, little raccoon right here. And so now we got a fox, two coyotes, and a raccoon, and plenty of sets left to check. I, I got a couple coyote sets, then I got my beaver sets to check today, and you know, I think if I catch a beaver today, I think that should be the last one in there if there's, you know, any left in there right now, so, um, and I should be able, I'm hoping I can check, check the sets to see if they're still, uh, still working or made catches without putting waders on. If I have a catch, I'll drop my, put my waders on and all that, that's not an issue, but. I think I have them in spots where I can get to them and see them without uh, putting my waders on. So, but we'll get this guy out of here and we'll get moved on. Putting some fur in the truck again today. All right, guys. So I'm uh, again making good time through the line. Nothing in the beaver sets today. Um, I'm by the zoo here. I have my mink box still over there. And I left the colony traps in this culvert, so like I said, I'm just kneeling on the culvert here. And, oh, nothing today. Other than just a glob of mud. Nothing. So we'll get those three all reset back in there, and uh, hopefully tomorrow we do better. Well guys, I believe I called it before I left the house. Cold weather was going to make the coyotes run around, and boy did I uh, call that one. So I'm just about done. I got, uh, what, I think just two coyote sets left after these, and just a few uh, raccoon sets and one mink box left to check, but 
I'm out here uh, by this drainage ditch. Uh, there's a farm service road comes out here and I'm by this bridge that cuts across so they can get access to this field. I showed you guys this, uh, it's been exactly a week ago. And I got a coyote right here. And I had a coyote in this set last uh, Saturday and it's Saturday today. This looks like a big coyote there. I mean, again, maybe not quite as big as that very first one I caught, but a darn good size looking coyote. But winner, winner, chicken dinner. We got ourselves a double here again. So one week later and I got a pair of coyotes here again. So two weekends in a row on Saturdays, we got doubles. So that makes uh, four coyotes for the day so far and a fox, so another uh, five dog day. Boy, I don't know, surprising, but this one here is only, he's toe caught, so we're gonna kind of leave him alone. We're gonna get him taken care of first. This other bigger one's, you know, caught deep in that MB550, so. But yeah, and like I said, I don't know that I showed this way that well. So it's just a drainage ditch going this way as well. And it kind of runs over towards these trees on the fence line here. So kind of weaves through here and then it kind of weaves up towards this house up over this way. So I don't know if they're running the ditch or if they're running this road up to this farm place that's up, up that direction. You know, or it isn't that far. It's probably 150 yards over to this tree line over here. So again it's kind of a out in the middle of nowhere location and I kind of found it by accident and since I've been setting it I've been catching I don't know probably two or three dogs a year every year you know between coyotes and fox out here and a few raccoons and well I got four coyotes caught out here now and basically I think this is the eighth check on this spot and I got four coyotes caught so again we'll get both of these guys out of there we'll get these sets remade and we'll get moved on all right guys we made her home um pretty successful day out on the line again today i'll tell you i don't know uh i like you said i kind of predicted it before i left that you know it was cold this morning like cold cold and low winds i figured it'd be kind of you know uh, canines would be out moving the coyotes especially and i seen you know like i said i seen two this morning while i was deer hunting just you know, a couple hundred yards away, which is, you know, I hunt with a shotgun, so, you know, nothing I'd even consider, and, uh, yeah, I guess it paid off on the line today, I, you know, I have a roughly 40 coyote sets out, and, uh, ended up catching everything I caught today in coyote sets, so six animals in 40 coyote sets, which is, I. Uh, heck of an average nine checks in so this should be the ninth check and uh heck of an average i'll tell you catching you know honestly like i mean some guys you know like to say they uh you know catch 15 percent every day well that very well may be true but you know the type of country you're trapping makes a lot of difference in that there's not a thousand coyotes within the you know roughly 90 mile trap line i'm running you know, there's probably, you know, 50, 75 coyotes in that area at the most. I don't even think there's close to that even. So for me to catch four of them <clears throat> in one check, you know, is pretty big deal for me anyway. But kind of give you a quick rundown. So I had this fox right away in the first set. So I uh, come home and dropped him off. He's big. I mean, like, he may be one of the bigger foxes I've ever caught, to be honest with you. Um, again, not the reddest, reddest fox I've ever caught. Not the most well-furred fox I've ever caught. But he's big anyway. And then uh, we started with this one here. This is the very first coyote. You can see how much like deeper this coyote is chest-wise than like the rest of these. I mean, these are bigger dogs too, but this guy here has got a little extra girth to him. Um, but yeah, and I actually like, so this is the first one I had got, um, kind of by where that road and that tree line is this one here and this raccoon I had caught on the same fence line, just, you know, I don't know, quarter mile apart from each other, a little more 
along a fence line, you know, both in coyote sets. You know, he's, this one here is a little bit darker color, and then these two here are nice and light colored ones, so. But yeah, again, well furred, full furred. This one looks a little rough, just he's got a few burrs and stuff in him. Um, then these two here were caught together. Um, and this one here is a, a big coyote. This one here I thought was maybe a pup, but it's big. I don't think it's a pup. If it is, it's, you know, it's way bigger than any of the other pups I've caught this season. So, um, but yeah, I had these two on that uh, bridge across that little drainage ditch. So second time this year, I've caught a double there. And I think maybe one other time I've had a double out there, but uh yeah, twice twice this year now, and basically a week apart, had to double out on that uh, out on that little bridge, and then I got a rac the little raccoon that I caught next to this coyote, out, and he's not big, he's like a young of the year. You know, he'll grade like an extra large or maybe a two XL at the most, but you know, the farmer will be happy he's out of there and. I was gonna show you this too. So this is the second one I caught that I caught by where I caught that. See how he's got the white tip? Normally they have a black tip in my area here. You know, black tip. He's got a pretty good white tip, but then these two I caught right next to each other. And this one's got a little bit of white in there too. So I think I pointed that out last year that I had a couple, I had like three or four last year had white tips, but this one's got, you know, quite a bit more than most. So I don't know. I don't know what really causes that or why he has a little bit of gray there, but, you know, he's almost got more than what this fox does. This fox doesn't really have the biggest white tip in the world either, so. Just kind of an interesting coincidence that a couple coyotes got white tips on their tails. I don't know. I mean, at some point, maybe they got a little red fox bred into them or something. I don't know. I don't know if that ever happens, but just kind of an interesting quirk. You know, and I never noticed it for years, but now the last couple of years, I've noticed that I've had a few that have it. So, but yeah, so pretty successful day running just landline traps. I did check those beaver sets with nothing. I'm going to check them and pull them tomorrow. The colony traps that I got in that culvert, we're kind of going to leave those maybe a few days here. Again, they're easy to check. Um, and while I was checking those, I actually had a, uh, a gentleman stop there that owns land right next to that. And he's got a beaver house. He's got their mowed down a whole bunch of corn out in his field this year. So he kind of liked me to get in there and trap some beavers out of there again. So. Just when I kind of thought I was going to be done wearing the waders and out of the water trapping, looks like I got at least one more beaver house to trap. And so I think a uh, couple days here, because it's right in the middle of deer season here, uh, opening week in the deer season. So I'm not going to go out there by that. Uh, we're going to give it till Monday and I'll go scope it out. I might leave some of the, you know, the footholds and the conner bear that I pull tomorrow. I'll, uh, probably leave them right in the truck. So when I go out there to kind of scope out the beaver house, if I can, I'll maybe try and drop in a couple beaver sets. I might not set up the whole thing the first day, but set up a few traps around the thing, you know, the as long as I already have them and I have them in my truck or whatever. The only thing I might grab is one tall H stand, you know, for that 330, if I can find one of the runs, an easy run to set it on. Um, We'll do that the first day when I go look at it. Otherwise, the second day, I'll kind of scope out. I usually try to look at a beaver house and maybe find the runs. You know, I'll walk around it out in the water. And I'll try and find the runs, you know, figure out if there's two or three runs. You know, I need two or three, three thirties to set the runs. And then if I want to set some footholds, whatever, you know, I got, I kind of set up a game plan before I go actually try to trap it. So usually I'll go one day and scope it out. The next, you know, that same day, I'll load up whatever traps when I get home here, whatever traps into my truck, I think I'm going to be able to get set there. And then the second day, I set up basically everything all at one time. But like I said, if I already have a few traps in my truck uh, for the ones I'm going to pull tomorrow, I may, like I said, just leave those in my uh, truck here and then uh, be ready to set a few. Uh, I may not set the run right away, like I said. I may just drop in those two footholds. I make a couple caster mounds there. 
and then uh, kind of see, you know, if a guy catches a couple or whatever, I can uh, kind of judge whether or not I even want to set up the runs or, and I don't know, like, I'm going to have to check the weather too to see, like, freezing and thawing because there was a little bit of ice on some of the Sioux this morning. Not a lot, and not on, some of them had none, some had quite a bit, so we're going to have to kind of pay attention to that a little bit too if I'm uh, trying to put footholds for beavers. Um, you know, that's an open water thing. There can't be ice or they typically don't work very well. So, but yeah, I think that's all I got for you today. So like I said, it's going to be mostly uh, land trapping for a while here. Like I said, there'll be maybe a few beavers in here. We'll see kind of what I can do with them. Um, and like I said, them few colony traps and some ink boxes. So that's kind of, kind of going to be the game plan for uh, prior to the rest of the season here. Or, like I said, maybe a few beavers thrown in here for the next week or so, but heck of a day out on the line, I'll tell you. So I got quite a bit of work ahead of me here. We're going to get slicing and dicing on these guys, get them all skinned, and get in the house where it's warm. All right, we'll see you guys out on the line tomorrow.